Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome into a new series for NO1800. Now this is going to be a very special series because this is a much requested beginner's walkthrough series for the channel. A lot of people have been asking me for something that will show them how all the different mechanics of the game work, the different tiers of the game, things you need to think about and know about as you advance through the game, and I figured this would be a great time to start that. So this first episode is actually going to be mostly about the UI. We're going to talk about the different elements of the UI, things you need to know about, shortcuts that might help you, and what everything you see on the screen is going to be about. Each episode will be about a very specific uh, topic. So this episode is UI and shortcuts and things like that. The next episode will be about the farmer tier. The next episode after that will be workers and so on and so on. So without any further ado, Let's jump in and take a look at the UI for Anno 1800. So the UI for Anno 1800 is fairly well done and it's very intuitive what, with what information it shows you. If we take a look and we start in the upper left hand corner, we have your profile. This shows you your profile icon, your profile level, and your game time. And then it also shows you what you need to meet to get to the next profile level. As you can see right here, we're on profile level one, which is what you start at. Our game time currently is two minutes and 33 seconds. And I need to reach a global population of 400. When I reach that global population of 400, I will go to level two and I will also get 20 influence. Those numbers do change over time and it takes more and more global population to reach the next level, but you will always get 20 influence as long as you are on the normal difficulty settings or you have left your influence on high influence if you have done a custom difficulty setup. Moving on from there, we have your coins. This is your total available balance. This is all the money that you have available to spend right here. The amount of money you have to spend is influenced by your balance. Your balance is the result of your income minus your spending. Now, if we click on the balance, we'll be taken to the statistics screen to the finance tab. This gives you a more detailed breakdown. Of course, there's nothing right here for us to look at because I haven't built anything, but in the next uh, entry in the series, this will get more fleshed out and we'll take a little bit closer look at it. But it is literally your income from taxes and things like that, or any other sources of revenue that are consistent revenue. There is sources of revenue such as trade routes, which is inconsistent revenue. This only shows consistent revenue, and then it will break down all of your expenses. As you can see, we do have one warship listed. That is our flagship. However, the flagship is free. If it cost money, it would show the deduction right there. After that, you have your global population. This is a total of all of your residents in all sectors. It breaks it down to the island that you're currently looking at, and then also your total across all regions. You click on this one right here, it will take you to the population tab of the statistics screen, and it will show you a very detailed breakdown right here of all of your residential statistics. Again, this is something we'll take a closer look at in the next entry when we have people on the island. The next one is a very important one that a lot of people don't know about, especially newcomers to the game, that is very, very crucial. This is your influence counter. Influence is a refundable resource that you accumulate by either increasing your global population or by getting influence from your investor tier, or when you have skyscrapers, you also get influence from engineer skyscrapers. Influence is used for many, many things in the game. If we select our influence counter right here, we're brought to the influence screen and we can see that there are categories for propaganda, trade, military, optimization, culture, and expansion. Clicking any of these cards will flip them over. This information here is really, really important. You get a certain amount of influence to be used for all of these different uh, items within each category for free. For example, trade ships, you get eight influence for free before things actually start costing influence. So I could build eight schooners, four clippers, two clippers and four, um, eight schooners or eight schooners, four clippers, or um, like two clippers and four schooners, any, any combination that adds up to eight. After you have used up your eight free influence, then they will start costing influence and that cost is deducted from your total available influence right here. 
This goes for everything on all of these cards. Military ships, you're, you're allowed up to 20, which is really, really nice because you can get a substantial small fleet going before they start costing influence. Um, there's also defensive buildings, uh, airships, trade unions, town halls, harbor masters, and so on. There's lots of different categories here. One of the most important categories is your expansion category. The reason being is this next screen for the influence, which is your milestones. There are milestone rewards for spending influence in different categories. One of the most important one is the expansion category because you get free workforce. And once you have spent 50 influence in the expansion category, you get 50 workers or 50 workforce for free. At 150, you get 100 workforce. And then at 300 invested influence, you get a total of 200 workforce. This is not additive all the way across. This is just how much you get flat. So once we have invested 300 influence in the expansion category, we will get 200 free workforce of every tier except investors. Now this only works in the old world, Cape Trelawney, and the new world. The free workforce does not apply to Inbessa or the Arctic. So just be aware of that. But that 200 free workforce is big. For farms that take like 10 farmers, that's 20 farms on an island you can build for free. You can set up a basic, uh, basic oil production with 200 workforce. It's really, really nice to get that. So you want to expand your influence in that category as soon as possible. The easiest way to do it is just go and claim islands. You get 60 for free. You'll use that 60 up really quickly. Go start claiming as many islands as you can afford to with your influence and start investing in that and getting those, uh, getting those islands set up. I would not recommend buying shares, to be honest with you. I would just go for islands, okay? But yeah, this is a very, very important screen. I think everybody needs to take their time and go through this if you're not familiar with it. So moving on from there, we have the island workforce, happiness, and island population section right here in the center of the screen. Uh, normally right here, there would be a list of your available workforce for each residential tier. Of course, I don't have anybody on the island, so we can't see that. And we'll take a closer look at that in the next episode. But this right here would show you your available workforce. The uh, little smiley face or, you know, blank face as it is right here is our happiness meter. This shows you how happy, content, or upset your island is and is a very good indicator of if you have enough luxury goods coming in or if something is wrong with your island's happiness level. This right here shows you your island shows you your island's total population and the little black silhouette turns into a picture of whatever is the highest available or highest progressed residential tier on the island is. If you only have farmers on the island, it's going to show a farmer icon. If you have investors on the island, it's going to show an investor and so on. This is your resident uh, happiness meter. This shows you how content your people are or how mad they are at you. Across the top, we have displayed goods. You can change this right here. We have timber and steel beams shown for the moment. If I wanted fish up there, I can click and drag fish or any other material I want. I have weapons in storage. I could drag weapons up here, however you want. It defaults to timber, steel beams, brick, and reinforced concrete is what it defaults to. But you can change that to whatever you want. This right here is our attractiveness tab. If we click on this for details, you'll see that this shows you everything you need to know about attractiveness and what all is affecting it. As you can see, we're getting 319 attractiveness from nature, and that is just from the countryside. If there were festivals, we would get some attractiveness from that. Culture is things like zoos and museums. You'll get attractiveness from that. Now, vulgarity, pollution, and instability are negative modifiers. Vulgarity comes from things like soap, uh, soap factories, tallow makers, slaughterhouses, and pig farms. Those are big contributors to vulgar vulgarity because those are just really nasty buildings. No one wants to live near them. 
Pollution comes from heavy factories. How can you identify a heavy factory? Look for the smoke coming out of the smokestack of the building. If it is black smoke, that is a heavy factory. Factories that are not polluting have white smoke coming out of them. So that's a good way to tell. If it's a heavy factory, it's going to have black smoke. Things like furnaces, steelworks, steam uh, cab assembly lines, motor assembly lines, those are all heavy factories and they cause pollution. Things like brick factories, spectacle factories, bicycle factories, those are not heavy factories. Those are not affected by pollution. Instability only comes when you have war or incidents going on your island, such as riots, and it will lower attractiveness momentarily. This is a temporary one right here, and it will go away once that incident is over. As you increase your next attractiveness level, you will level up and get uh, your settlement called different things, essentially. Here in the middle, very simple. We have our, si our city name. You can change your city name, highlight it, backspace, call it whatever you want. Voila, Takaland. And then it also has the name underneath it of what type of settlement it is. Again, this is a quaint settlement, quaint settlement. The next thing right here is our shares overview. This is the shares of the island that you or your AI opponents may or may not own. For the most part, I wouldn't worry about this too awful much. The AI can sometimes buy shares of yours on your island. If they do, all you need to do is go in and, and click one of your shares and click yes to sell it. What you're going to do is sell that to the, to the queen and then the AI will no longer buy shares on your island. If you go to an enemy island or, you know, just it doesn't have to be an enemy, just an AI opponent's island, you can also buy shares from them. It costs 10 influence and you will get income from that. However, the AI can and will buy those shares back. So just be aware of that. Moving into the upper right, uh, these are just your basic controls, your online status. This is the day-night cycle. It's default set to 1 p.m. or 1300. There's also presets for 540 a.m., 1300, 2100, and midnight. You can change those there, or you can just turn the day-night cycle on and off at your leisure. And then from there, of course, we have the uh, your game speed controls. Pause, slow down, regular, fast, and fastest. Now, something to note on these right here, fast, reg, uh, regular, fast, and fastest will change your game time. As you can see right there, we're going on at a regular pace of every one second. If I go to fastest, our game time speeds up considerably. So game time is not real time. It is based on your, um, it's based on your game speed. So your game time is not real time unless you only ever play in regular and you don't change it. And then, of course, we have our menu button here. One really quick thing I want to show you on the game menu itself that uh, a lot of people don't know about or miss is if you click on load game, if you click saved games underneath whatever profile you're wanting to, um, to load a saved game on, you don't just have to click the big profile thing. Click on saved games and it will actually show you all of the available auto saves that you can load. So if you want to go back um, a certain amount of time to reload from an earlier uh, point in time, just click on the saved games and you can bring that up. This also shows you your actual real time uh, as opposed to the game time. So this will show you your real time played as well as your map seed number right here. So that is really, really good to know. All right, moving down into the uh, kind of over here into this left side. We have our notifications tabs. We have the quest book, which will show our quest log. If there are quests in here, you can click details to bring up the quest log itself to see more details about it. The event tracker. The event tracker shows things like uh, World's Fair, special visitors at the public mooring, and anything you have developed at the Research Institute. Those will show up over here. You can either have it on character message or notification, however you want it. Character message means that you're going to get a little pop-up window. Notification simply means it's going to pop up in the notification over here. So that's a good way to keep track of those three things going on. Your notifications tab is all regular positive type stuff. Basically, it's going on. Uh, anything that's not like a warning of any sort. Things like diplomatic relations, visitors, culture, 
uh, items, trade route stuff, logistics and railway progress and so on will show up underneath here. And you can click this little filter notifications icon and turn any of them off you want. The warnings is the exact same stuff. This all affects both tabs right here. So if you turn off trade route errors he, um, up here, it will turn it off down here as well under warnings. So this uh, filter is for both tabs right there and you can change anything that you want. All right, moving down into the uh, lower left-hand corner, we have our mini map and our island information. This shows you the name of the island right here. It shows you any all of the available fertilities on this island. Now, if you're not familiar with how fertilities work, we will get into that in the next episode. This shows you your island fertilities and your island uh, mineral deposits. Of course, we have our mini map, and then we have the world map icon right here. You can change between different regions or just go to the world map itself and take a look around. Of course, we have the old world. Cape Trelawney is here. Inbessa is here. New world is here. And the Arctic is up here. Of course, we don't have any of those unlocked yet, so we just have the Old World. The next tab is the Diplomacy tab. This is where you can go and interact with other AIs on the map. From here, we can sign treaties such as request trade rights, request a non-aggression pact, or declare war. Or we can do things like flatter them, insult them, offer gifts, or ask for a quest from the AI. The next button down here is our trade routes tab. This is one way you can go to find your trade routes and to create trade routes. There are charter routes and trade routes. Um, I'm going to get into more of those later on in this series. And I also have several guides about trade routes on the channel. If you're interested in those, the link to all of my tips and guides playlist will be down in the description. And the last thing on this screen, which is the meat and potatoes of this game, is your build menu. The build menu gives you access to building everything in the game. By default, it is separated into tiers. So there'll be farmers, workers, artisans, engineers, investors, and then depending on DLC, there'll also be tourists and scholars. You can also click building sort by type and sort this into di um, a different type of categorization. So we'd have building materials, city related buildings, consumables, Harbor District stuff, and anything related to ornaments and culture would be right there. I personally just like sorting it by progress and just leaving it like that. But everything that you need to have uh, build or be built is going to be located down here. The Farmers tab is unique because it also contains the majority, not all, but the majority of any special ornaments that you get from either cosmetic DLCs, Twitch drop events, or anything like that. Uh, some stuff is in other tabs, such as the, um, the Docklands ornaments are only found under the Artisan tab, under, the heart, under a special icon under there, but most special ornaments are located right here under this tab uh, of Farmers. Going across the top, we have some extra um, little icons right here where you can drag any sort of unique building. Like I like to drag my temperate forest stuff up here into this empty slot that way I have quick access. That's all these are, just quick access. You can change them around however you want. And we'll talk about the right click thing here in a second, but I do love my little quick access stuff. That way I don't have to go through all the tabs. Uh, other buttons right here, we have relocate. Again, this is only if you are on normal or advanced difficulties expert difficulty movement building movement is turned off or if you disabled it in custom difficulty settings we have the copy which lets us copy any building so if i was to set down a small warehouse i can click copy click it and then i could do that alternatively you can also copy all areas so if i was to do this i click and left a left click and drag hold down left mouse button and drag and you can copy a whole bunch of stuff to put down the next one is the skin painter this just came this is part of the vibrant cities dlc so you may not have access to it over here we have the demolish pretty self-explanatory it lets us blow things up and then we have the upgrade button lets us upgrade homes and then for later on with the High Life DLC, there is an upgrade skyscraper. 
The last thing to talk about over here is the blueprint. Blueprint mode is typically turned off, but if you turn blueprint mode on and you go to build a house, now it is in blueprint mode. Blueprint mode is very simple. It puts down a silhouette of the building that you want to place, but it doesn't use up any resources. It's great for laying out a new part of town or something that you're trying to lay out, but you don't want to use the resources for it yet. And when you're ready for it, you can just hit either the upgrade button here or upgrade here. All right, guys, and that is it from me. That is a quick overview of the Anno 1800 UI, everything on it, what it all means, and what the different functionality of the different parts of the UI are for you. All right, guys, and that is it for me. That is a overview of the Anno 1800 UI, what everything means, some of the stuff that you, you need to know about, and the most important stuff on there you need to know about and how it works. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at the farmer tier of the game and go through a lot of the meat and potatoes as it were, uh, of how the game works and your production setups and how to get your actual city up and running. I hope this gave you a, a kind of a good understanding about the UI, different things like that. If it did, let me know down below in the comments. Leave a like. If you are not subscribed to my channel already, go ahead and do that as well to keep up with more content from me in the future. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Take care.